wait for a little bit? Should I get started? How many people are in the meeting? Oh, seven. Um, yep. Give it a couple minutes, maybe? Two, three minutes? Okay, that sounds good. Also, do you think you could allow me to record it so that I'm going to share it more widely on my Google Classroom for all the students who weren't able to join? Sure. I am also recording it, Mr. Messick, if that's useful to you. I'm just screen recording it, not Zoom recording it. Oh, what are you using to record it? I'm just using QuickTime Player um, and then creating a new screen recording. Got it. So, life students, we're going to wait two more minutes um, in case any other students want to come. If you have classmates who you know are interested, feel free to text them or remind them. You know, it's, it's early on days when you're not busy going to school. True. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so nice to see you guys on this meeting, though, Fernando and Matthew and everybody. <laughs> oh, we miss you guys. So I'm just looking for my pen because I lost it just about now. Right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And the whole goal of this is um, that Life Academy students, that you can get um, good information because um, there's a lot of information going around. And so I'm doing this because I want to make sure that you feel like you're getting good information that you can share with people. And I want to make sure I answer your questions. Um, and so what I'm going to do is um, I made a little PowerPoint if you're on a computer. You should be able to see the PowerPoint. If not, um, that's okay. You can just listen. I'll explain all the things that I'm uh, showing. And then um, I'm going to answer the questions that people ask in the Google survey. And then um, I'll open it up to questions you all have. But at the end of the day, my goal is for you to feel like your questions are getting answered. All right. Um, also, you can email me. With questions, my email is right here. It's Emily, E-M-I-L-Y, dot Frank, F-R-A-N-K, at O-U-S-B dot org. Um, and I'll periodically try to check that while we're doing a meeting, too. I want to start by talking about what a virus is. So in the world, there's many, many things that we cannot see because they're so tiny. And you've probably heard about bacteria a lot. There's bacteria all over our bodies. There's many good bacteria. There's also some bacteria that make us sick. Viruses are even tinier than bacteria. You could probably fit a thousand viruses inside a bacteria because they're so tiny. If you think about a pencil tip, you could fit thousands of viruses on that pencil tip. And our bodies are having exposure to viruses every single day. Most viruses don't make us sick because our bodies are really good at fighting them off. Um, but sometimes our body can't fight off that virus. That virus is tricky and good at what it does, and that causes us to get sick. So almost all of us have had a cold before. That cold was caused by a virus. That virus came into our body and our body wasn't able to fight it off all the way and that's why we got sick. And so coronavirus is a type of virus and there's actually 
many, many kinds of coronaviruses. Probably all of us have had a coronavirus before. What's different about this coronavirus is something changed in its genetic material and it's better at making us sick. And that's why we're calling it novel coronavirus. Novel means new. And so this is the new coronavirus or the novel coronavirus. And it's really good at making us sick. And we don't exactly know why. Scientists are trying to study right now. And so this is like a microscopic picture of a virus. And inside there's RNA, that's genetic material, that makes different proteins. And then it has what we call a capsid, that's a shell that protects the genetic material. And then on the outside, there's what we call surface proteins. And those surface proteins help the virus attach to a human and get inside. So I'm going to pause and ask, are there questions at all about what viruses are or um, what they look like or how they're structured? I'm going to keep going, and I'll leave a lot more um, information, uh, room for questions. So coronavirus is the name of the virus. When people get sick, we call it COVID or COVID-19. So for example, if you've ever gotten a cold, we call it a cold, right? Or la gripa. But it's caused by rhinovirus usually, or sometimes other viruses. It's the same idea with coronavirus. So um, the virus is called coronavirus. The sickness that you get from it is called COVID-19. So what are the symptoms of COVID-19? Meaning what things is a person's body doing if they have it? And the first thing, I can actually add this right here. This virus can often be asymptomatic. People, especially kids, might not have any symptoms at all in the beginning. Then the symptoms they develop are kind of like a flu. It can cause a fever, it can cause a cough, and usually this is a really dry cough. It's like a <coughs> as opposed to one where you're hearing a lot of mucus and phlegm in the chest. Those are the most common symptoms in adults. Um, there can also be a runny nose or a sore throat, and there can also be body aches, meaning all the muscles feel sore, and maybe it feels like you just played a soccer game. So what do you do if you think you might have this? So if you think you might have this, stay in your house and call your doctor's office, or if you search online, you can find a number for the Department of Public Health. And this is really, really, really important because if you do have it, we don't want you to go into the community and get other people sick. Also, in different places, there's different amounts of tests. And so we'd hate for you to go and be in a waiting room for hours and hours and then not even be able to test you, but expose other people and expose you to other people during that time. And so if you think you have it, or if you think somebody in your family has it, the safest thing you can do is call your doctor's office. There are lots of nurses answering the phones who can let you know exactly what you should do. If they think you need to be tested, they'll let you know where you can get tested. And the kind of test you get is just like a flu swab. So it's like a skinny little Q-tip and it goes in your nose. And it's kind of uncomfortable. It makes you feel like you need to sneeze. But there's no blood test. Um, it's just this like Q-tip in the nose that makes you feel like you might need to sneeze. If you think you have it, it's very important that you're staying home, that you're not leaving your home, that you're wearing a mask if you're around other people, and that you're staying away from people who are elderly. And I'm going to show you why. What we know is that kids who get this 
usually do very, very well. Kids aren't That's getting so super sick from this, and kids are not so dying from this. But what we've seen is it's people over 50, and especially people over 70, who are getting really, really sick for this. And in the beginning, it's like having a flu or a cold, but they can get a lot sicker. Their lungs and their heart can get really sick. And so what you can see is the older you are, the greater the chance of people getting really sick or possibly even dying. And so I don't want you to worry or panic because you are not likely to get very sick. But the thing that's important to know is that if you have this, you can spread it. And so we really don't want you to spread it to people who are elderly. And so it's not the best time to visit your grandma or your grandpa. If you live with them, it's a good idea to put on a mask and try to stay separate from them so that if you have these germs, your body is really good at fighting it off, but their body might not be as good at fighting it off. All right, I'm gonna pause and see if there's questions. Um, and then if not, I'm gonna talk about social distancing. Are there any questions about what I've talked about so far? I do. Go ahead. Um, specifically, where in the body, where does the COVID-19 live? Like in the lungs or mushrooms? That's a really good question. Was that Fernando? Yeah. That's a really good question. So we don't know yet where it lives, but we know what it affects. And what it really seems to affect is the lungs. So it causes um, like pneumonia and a lot of inflammation in the lungs. And that can make it very hard for people to breathe. And then when it's hard for people to breathe, um, or when the lungs are very inflamed and full of fluid, it can affect the heart. And so while we don't know where it lives, we know that what it seems most of is the lungs and the heart. Thank you. What, what other questions do people have about what we've talked about so far? Hi, Dr. Frank. This is Mr. Messick. Quick question for you. Go ahead. One of my students said that he lives with um, his grandparents and they're quite a bit older and they live in a kind of small house, but mm -hmm. he didn't have any masks. Do you have any recommendations? Would it be like, should he wrap, if he gets sick, should he wrap a, you know, a shirt around his face? Should he go try to stay with a, with a family friend? Do you have any advice for that situation? Yeah, if possible, staying with a family friend is a good idea. Um, if that's not possible, that's a really good question. I would say um, put something around the mouth where they can still breathe. Um, so maybe like a shirt or maybe like some toilet paper or something to try to keep the droplets in. In those cases, it's really important to um, frequently wash hands, to cough into the shoulder, um, and to really try to minimize time in contact. So as much as possible, that student and their um, grandparents should be at least six feet apart. Good question. Are there other questions so far? Um, hi, Dr. Frank, this is Dominguez. <laughs> and I was just wondering, how likely are our students and us as teachers, um, how likely is it that we are carriers of this coronavirus? Truthfully, it's very likely. Um, coronavirus has been in the community for several weeks. Um, and it wasn't until Saturday or Sunday that we really had enough tests to be testing people. And so there's a lot of coronavirus in our community right now. And again, I don't want people to feel panic about this. Um, young people, your bodies are very good at fighting this off, but there's a lot of it in our community. And I think actually that's the perfect way for us to talk about social distancing. So um, some people might have seen the term flatten the curve. 
And so this goes back to what you've learned in some of your math classes.